Welcome to Collector's Corner, the premier digital art platform. We help collectors gain and maintain their edge, all while appreciating beautiful art. Let's jump in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cornering the Market. I believe this is episode number 32, Jared, which is kind of crazy. Uh, my name is P. I go by Aston Cloud online, joined by my co-host, Jared, who's also the founder of the 8NAP Digital Asset Fund. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, as we shared off camera, uh, I am in the process of relocating uh, to a new residence. So a little bit of stress this week just to get everything prepped. But other than that, I'm living the dream. That's right. We're living the dream. We're doing what we love. And there's still a great community here. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for supporting us. I wanted to give you a quick update. I am launching Collector's Corner Premium. We have a premium offering. If anyone is interested, please message at, at excuse me, at collectors underscore XYZ, which is our Twitter account here. You can also message my Twitter account, ask them cloud. You could also send us an email, collectors NFT, collectors corner NFT at gmail.com. Excuse me. And I have a nice video that I made that describes a premium offering and why I'm doing it which is to build out some tools and make it easier to help you find what you're looking for. And while we're on the Twitter pages, this is Jared's Twitter page, Jared underscore pause. Give him a follow. If you're interested in digital assets, check that out. He is fantastically running a fund. And we have here as well, the Collector's Corner Substack. We send out our weekly episodes over there too. We send some tweets out about it. A lot of content for you all to keep up with the generative art world. But if you're interested in building wealth, check out the Collector's Corner Premium. Reach out, I should say, and I will get you more information on that. So let's uh, get into the episode. But before we do, quick word from our fantastic sponsors at Eclipse.art. I fell in love with blockchain because I believe open decentralized systems have the power to change the world. So I'm really excited to be working with Eclipse.art. They're the first on-chain self-custody generative art platform focused on Ethereum. This really matters because open platforms foster innovation and the best ideas spread to benefit us all, which is really exciting whether you're an artist, a builder, or a collector. So for artists, Eclipse gives you full control over your contracts, open C pages, royalties, and you can create and host individual drop pages on your own domain. You also don't need to know Solidity. They also have a fantastic UI that makes it easy to launch and test collections. For builders, Eclipse offers a sophisticated developer API, so you can build on top of their platform and create fantastic new experiences, which benefits the artists and collectors too. Also, they'll be branching out to other L2s and EVMs, which is going to be quite the sandbox. And for collectors, Eclipse is built by people like us, generative art enthusiasts, so they know what kind of experience we want. Our marketplace features to cut down on fees, auto capture of royalties to make it easy to support your favorite artists, and smart UX and UI. Their platform is tailored to help you find great art. I'm excited to see the innovations Eclipse is bringing to the market and highly recommend you check them out. Again, whether you're an artist, builder, or collector. All right, we are back. Let's dive into the show. Jared, let's let's get a vibe check. What's the vibe you are hearing out in the gen art space? Conflicting vibes. Uh, you know, last night I had a little bit of time while sitting in the sauna, and I actually listened to Seed Phrase's interview with um, uh, Overpriced JPEGs, and I thought he had a really interesting perspective about uh, the bottoming and that potential rotation given in basically, I don't want to say imminent, but a largely anticipated recession. And it just got me thinking. And then this morning, you know, um, you know, Toth had a you know great friend of the podcast had an interesting perspective on where we're heading in the market. So, uh, and then the other part of it that I'm really really intrigued by, I can't remember who tweeted it, but it, it kind of sparked, it planted a seed. Uh, no pun intended on seed phrase, but it, you know, talking about uh, all this meme coin money and how it will rotate. And the picture said meme coins and then an arrow pointed to basically an art piece. And I thought that that was a really interesting idea. I think the meme coin thing is, is fun and exciting for a lot of people, but you know, when you got to rotate profits, where do you go? And I really do feel um, it can't get much worse, you know, famous last words. And, and I think seed phrase was 
discussing this on the on the podcast with overpriced JPEGs about you know some of the stuff is down ninety percent off the the highs, and you know seeing it go down another ninety percent is unlikely. And and I feel like we're at this point where could it go down more? Yes. Is there an asymmetric upside? I in my heart of hearts truly believe the answer is yes. So it's a long winded response to say. I'm highly contemplative. I really do feel like it's a, again, if you have a long-term perspective, there's a really great entry points right now. Uh, and I think just the problem is, is a lot of people aren't liquid right now. So it's creating a lot of uh, angst, but I hope to see some, some liquidity flow in. Yeah, that's great. I need to listen to that interview that seed phrase had, seed phrase had. Um, and I haven't had a chance to get in discord to talk, to hear what Toth had to say, but uh, thanks for sharing that. I will just add, you know, we're looking at these in Ethereum terms. Nobody's looking at these in US dollar terms. It's not as bad in US dollar terms. And we're also looking at floor prices. And there are people trying to get liquidity and lowering floor prices. That's not to say that median prices, which I think is a better indicator, is not down as well. But I don't think it's down as much. And, you know, as they say, it's always darkest before the dawn. I would say the vibe the word is still bored. I mean, people are just not uh, looking into it. They're now distracted by meme coins, as you mentioned. And I do think that those profits will eventually flow into true value, of which there is plenty in art. So that's the vibe check. Let's talk about blue chip art. Um, you know, we're not going to go through the top sales, et cetera. But Jared, any notable sales that you want to highlight? Honestly, man, it, it was a little bit of a struggle to find some notable sales this week. It's, it's been really slow, but I call it a mini run on anti-cyclones. Um, you know, somebody came in and swept up a ton. There is a rarer for Denza palette that sold for 51 ETH, a really cool floor ringer to Suzanne NFT. Uh, but, you know, again, just propagating what we've been saying for weeks, you know, put those wrapped ETH bids out. I saw two really cool velvet palette memories, which I feel is like a very underrated palette. It's rarer doesn't get the attention it deserves, but man, like for 3.9 weath. Uh, so nothing crazy notable, but just a reaffirmation, at least for me, that uh, take a look and, and weath some stuff. If you're if you're in the market, you never know what happens. 100%. And I will add life in West America had a bit of a run. Floor price went back up to three and a half, eight sales there in the last week. Mind the gap by Mount Vitruvius. Somebody swept 10. Somebody dumped a bunch of bent by our friend Ipsketch, who we just had a podcast with. Check it out. He's awesome. Uh, but some rare bents got dropped and a bunch of people bought those too. So there are deals out there. And I know you're saying we've been talking about deals for a long time. It just depends on your time horizon, right? We're talking six, nine, 12 months out. So yes, in the last three months, these things may not have seemed like deals, but we really believe that there's true value there based on the merits of the art, the merits of the artists. And the, I mean, there's just so much progress still happening in the space under the hood that if you just look at these prices and whatnot, you're, you're going to get a, a bit of a skewed perspective. So I would encourage people to broaden. Um, how about FX hash, Jared? Anything you of know, note? Yeah, I, I thought th there was two things in particular um, that I wanted to highlight. Well, three really. One MJ Lindau is waiting in aft and had two sales. So this is a 50 piece set. And then all of a sudden you see two sales. I, I can't tell you the last time there's a sale. Um, and it was really interesting. One at 2000 Tez and one at 3000 Tez. Um, oh, there you go. It's on screen four months prior, you know? So I thought that was a really intriguing uh, sale because it jumped to number two for the last seven days. Um, the, the other one that I wanted to touch on is I didn't want to say we told you so, but we told you so. That uh, Refle Reflejos um, went Whoa. off. Yeah, I it was this. when we were talking about it, it was at 100 Tez last week and there's only seven listed and the floor jumped to 777 Tez with basically a lot of sales on the last three days between the 200 to 400. So again, I, I see this falling off the, the sales chart, uh, the attention going away, but man, it, it's a beautiful project. Um, you know, there's a couple tickets that have been unclaimed. I'm, I'm gently stalking those. <laughs> so anybody listening to uh, the pod right when this releases, you know, maybe we'll be battling for those unclaimed tickets. But I thought there's a really, really interesting um, attention that went there. And again, you know, Juan's project, I think it's his first one on Tez, just something I've been really, really uh, focused on. And again, heavy bias. I own three of them, full disclosure. And then the last point was 
seeing the resurgence in Zankin, I can't tell if it is a um, a symptom of his exposure in bright moments or just some really dope art, but like seeing KGMs come back to life with two sails and the floor jumping on that. I've been DMing with a bunch of people on Twitter about uh, Zankin and KGM specifically. So I don't know, man, it, it feels like it's probably premature to say this, but Zankin just feels like the goat of Tezos art. And if, uh, you know, it's just consistently, you know, in the, in the top five, top 10, and, and you see it consistently week over week. I mean, I couldn't be more bullish at these prices on Zankin. And yeah, I, I, I my bags are oriented that way too. Right. So uh, I do have a bias. Yeah. And I, I own a couple of bug forests with Zankin. I don't have as many as you, but I don't think it's premature to say that. I mean, he's clearly the, most popular artist on the Tezos side and even very popular in the Ethereum side. Um, actually, I just, I was mentioning to you, recorded an interview with Art Matter where he did a show there at NFT NYC and the love for Zankan is is quite universal and a uh, great call on Riffle Hills. I do not own any, but uh, kudos to those who do, including you. Let's see this people, this is what I'm talking about. The eight nap digital asset fund. Give him a ring. He's also a master at squiggles. What is going on in the squiggle world? Well, as predicted or potentially forecasted last week the 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 sales and, and volume dropped off steeply i mean yeah, 510 right last week dropped 149 ETH in, in seven day volume this week and then everything falls the cool thing that was really in, uh i'll call it validating is even with the the steep drop off in sales and volume the floor price has more or less maintained 9.1 versus nine this week um the, and then from a highlights perspective, man, it, it's it's pretty poultry out there. The only things I wanted to, I felt bad because I was trying to help somebody buy uh, some stuff at the floor. And um, literally we, were, we got a direction on things and then two things moved right away. And, and what I wanted to point out is there are, you know, things being listed at or close to the floor that are multiples of the floor or lower than the traditional multiple of the floor. What do I mean by that? Um, day zeros typically trade 10 to 20% higher. You can find them close to the floor. Fuzzies usually trade at 30 to 40% the floor. You can find them lower. So I think that there's a real good opportunity if you're willing to jump the floor a little bit uh, and, and you have the patience, there's some really good uh, deals out there. But other than that, man, it's just been um, nothing too crazy. No, 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 no great notable sales. But the good news is I don't think it goes down much from this. So I'm looking for a pickup next week. Slight yeah. pick, I should say. Squiggles on sale, which is great for those who have liquidity. Unfortunately, that's not me. But if you do, check them out. It's a good time. Okay, let's talk about friendship bracelets. Friendship bracelets have slowed down a bit in, in ways, I should say. So sales were 162 compared to, actually, it's up. 162 compared to 121 last week. Volume is 29 Ether compared to 20 last week, although floor price has dipped to 0.12. And listings are about the same. I can tell you in a second here. Got to check Blur because that's where a lot of the volume is. And we will be talking about Blur shortly. Uh, but, you know, essentially it, it's pretty consistent. Yeah, listings down to 24.51 on blur uh, compared to 2571 last week. So listings are down to look, the floor is thin on all of these things. That's, that's another thing I want to just impress to people. We'll be talking about some of these art blocks curated later, but we're talking like 5% listed when these things move, they, they will move. And I don't know if your boy seed phrase said that uh, on, <laughs> I don't know why I said your boy, but I don't know if seed phrase said that on the podcast, but uh, That's actually a, banks, it's but. a point he made and it's a point that I think is very valid and I was gonna kind of talk about it later on in the pod it's something I'm noticing and I, I won't give away all the projects that I'm tracking but I mean some of these floors are like you were talking about opening up they're ungodly thin and it's because people are looking for liquidity you got one or two people like just chasing the bottom to try to get that next sale and I think it's falsely lowering the floor and for those who are astute um again long-term perspective when the, when the rush comes it could be really really good 100 percent agree let's do some release recaps we don't have any specifics here but i just wanted to go to the explore open collections page on art blocks and you will see that 
pretty much everything that has minted in recent times is still open. And a lot of them are not even 50%. I mean, this one, unfortunately, there's only been 33 mints out of 444. So this just goes to show things are slow. Things are minting out extremely slowly. I also wanted to highlight uh, La, La Caverna by Marcelo Soria Rodriguez. This took a while to mint out. It is minted out now, but it took something like at least three or four days down to 0 0.15 ETH. This is a really well-known artist and, and some great art here. So it's just slow goings right now. I think if anybody is releasing, just, just be patient. It's not the worst thing in the world if your art doesn't mint out right away and probably have a lower floor than, than you think it should be worth. But you know, you'll know you be building up goodwill for when the market is back and, and get your art into people's hands and get them excited about you. That is really the only strategy that's going to work right now. I would impress to the artists that are minting, or excuse me, planning to release. And, you know, if you can wait to release, if you would like to make a little bit more money off the primary sale, that's not a bad idea. Anything yeah, you want to add, Jared? Yeah. First of all, a friend of Grailer's in that disconnected, pretty cool project. The His Discord handle is Tib, T-I-B, goes by, uh, or he's also the founder of 256 Art. Um, but really cool project there, but it's, it's kind of just, I mean, what you're saying is these things are not minting out. The other observation I have is the power of curated here. You have low vid who, you know, whose project when it was curated, got fully minted out and now less than 90. So less than a third or right about a third of their, um, presents collection is just sitting there unminted at 0.1 or 0.2, whatever the floor is. So I don't know. I, I think it's a it's a sad sign of the the state, but at the same time, you know, uh, we'll talk about it later on, you know, there, there are some really great opportunities presenting itself to, to mint and this low liquidity, I think can position you for some really great long-term appreciation, especially if you can sift through um, a lot of this and find the gold, but just uh, kind of breaks my heart a little bit to see some of these sitting unminted, but at the same time, uh, you know, it is what it is today. Yeah, and you got to remember, like, if you want euphoria, you got to be willing to accept this, right? The, the yin and the yang. There's there's no way to have it. Just have your cake and eat it, too. And I'm not, like, pointing fingers at any artists. Like, this, no individual is responsible for this. But I think this these are the dynamics of the market. And we are learning that, you know, for when we get euphorically high, you're, you're going to have some lows. Let's talk about some news. Gen Art News. Sotheby's lets 13 hand-selected NFT artists host their own sales. So essentially, Sotheby's is opening up their own marketplace, and they are launching with a bang, of course. Um, this is not a very long art uh, article, excuse me, but essentially there are 13 digital artists that are going to be helping to, I guess, curate artwork that will be sold, and they will also be allowed to sell their artwork directly to their audience without running it by Sotheby's. So I guess more of an open platform, but just for those 13 artists, it's Tyler Hobbs, Claire Silver, Sarah Zucker, Xcopy, Ixchels, Rafik Anadol. You can read the, the whole list here, but they're launching a marketplace. And uh, I, you know, I don't have it queued up here, uh, but Jared, maybe just if you have any thoughts, if not, no worries, I'll pull up like the details of their marketplace here. It, with a I think it's interesting that they're trying to pioneer this as a traditional auction house uh, to have a marketplace. I think it's going to be a little bit more focused overall, but I think it's dope that they're doing this. I think it further validates the the entry into the the digital art space. Uh, and you know, it goes a, a, it's aligned with what they. I think I believe the mission is is to have these curated, you know, engagements. And those thirteen artists are obviously amazing. I'd love to see a little bit more gen art on that list. I think Snowfro and Squiggles is a no brainer, um, and some other things, but. Yeah, man, I I think this is good. I think this is this is really awesome. I don't know if it'll be like uh, the, the biggest success for Sotheby's, but again, just another data point and a step in the right direction. Hundred percent agree. And royalties enforced on the smart contract level, which is interesting. I I don't I'm not smart enough to know all, all about this, but I know that this has uh, been a point of contention before, and it's an aggregator of marketplaces. So they're really going after that art first marketplace market. So. Something to keep an eye on, 2.5% fee, pretty pretty standard here. Um, and they will defend the artists. Not sure what that means, but excited to see them dipping their toes and rolling this out. 
Another update, some more news. GM Dow has released GM Studio version two. Uh, this is pretty cool. They're going to have two types of releases. One is blind, which continues their blind curation process. And those are going to be public sales, public Dutch auctions. And then they're going to have select, which is an artist in residency program where they, uh, well, select a specific artist. The first one are going to be Pisto Boy and Andrew Strauss a combination there. And these will be specifically for fixed price to their GM DAO token holder. So I know there's some turmoil over there. And uh, Jared, I think you're still a GM DAO token holder. And even if not, like, what are your thoughts on this? I am. I, I bought it. I'm ride or die, um, probably for better or for worse. I, I, for 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 reference, the I think the GM DAO tokens are really great buy right now because you do get that annuity uh, with the releases. I'm, I have mixed emotions on this. Obviously, bought the token prior to this announcement, and I the 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 duality of this is you know Web three moves and you're allowed to pivot. They need the studio money to stay keep the doors open. So I appreciate all that. It's also and they launched these GM Dell tokens you know based off of riddles uh, and for free. So there was no initial seed money from the the token release. So. I get that. And then, but you know, as a, as a, a holder, it's like, man, this is not what I originally bought. And you can see that in the price reflection. So I have very competing things about this overall. My logic brain says that this is good for the brand overall and, and to keep the doors open. It's better to have something rather than nothing, but very competing uh, emotions on it. I think it's a step in the right direction. If, yeah, I, and I, if I put my bags aside. Yeah. And I, you know, it, it's, you know, I've talked about this offline. Like it's tough, right? If, there's a, there's been a lot of learning in this space. And if you started with a business model that is maybe not sustainable, you have to pivot. There's, there's no way around that. And there's of course some pain in that. So I, I commend them for making the hard decision and doing uh, what they believe is more sustainable in the long run. Uh, and, you know, that's all you can do. Let's go to some great art and some great prices. Ceramics, art blocks curated. We did a Twitter Spaces with Charlotte Dan, who's fantastic. Her first collection down to 0 0.18 Ether floor. We don't get to talk about art blocks curated too much in our great art at great prices. And I really think these are beautiful. You know, again, this segment is not meant to be investment advice. None of this is, but these are particularly just art we find beautiful that are more affordable. And the floor is pretty thick here. So you could probably find one you like, one of Charlotte Dan's. The next one I want to highlight is Temporary by Julie Wyland. This was part of Fellowship's post photography perspectives release. I think these are super cool, a little bit haunting, a little bit um, grainy, I guess. I don't know what the right term is, but it, it's it's a, a little bit of nostalgia and the use of color is beautiful in these. Currently at a 0.166 ETH floor, these collections are only 100 pieces, only 9% listed, so literally nine listed. Um, so, you know, relatively thin, but really cool art so for folks who are into that uh, photography slash ai combo it's a good option and the last one is one that is still minting it's by andrew strauss who we mentioned in the gm dow segment it's called three lines three colors these haven't revealed but andrew strauss will you know he he's we'll talk about him actually in the the newsletter but he's a really well respected generative artist has great work and at 0 0.025 eth uh it doesn't get too much cheaper than that really a great price Next up, exciting new releases. It's actually releasing today. So by tomorrow, Friday, with you listeners, this will already be out. But Def Beef has a collaboration with, well, not a collaboration. He has a release for the Los Angeles County Museum of Arts Remembrance of Things Future in collaboration with Cactoid Labs. It's called Numenons and Chrono Photographs. Really, really cool project. Uh, Jared and I did a Twitter spaces with Def Beef on Monday. That'll be on the podcast. Check it out. He's extremely thoughtful and just a great guy. And this art is super, super cool. Um, yeah, Jared, do you, you want to say any words about this one? I mean, uh, we were both got to be, I guess, as we're calling them parametric artists on this, uh, which was an honor. So thank you to Def Beef again for that, allowing us to take some snapshots and be a part of the process. Yeah, I, I feel very honored to have A, made the allow list, and B, to have been a uh, parametric photographer. Uh, 185 was mine. I absolutely loved it. Very, very happy with it. But, man, look, I sat on a couple other spaces in addition to ours. 
I mean, Def Beef is just the, the, the thought and the, the level of execution on such a deep level, like blew my mind. Honestly, I'm, I'm so enamored with it. I'm very emotionally tied to it. Uh, but this is definitely something that I think, um, you know, is, is a really great entry point for those looking for Def Beef uh, exposure. I mean, you know, his other projects are, you know, 20 plus ETH. I imagine these will be slightly less. So I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping it can onboard more people to the space. Super excited for this. Yeah. And just like really, really quickly, there are 16 Numenons. You can think of them as the cameras and the cameras can take snapshots, which turn into these, these chrono photographs that I'm showing on screens on screen. I'm not doing it justice. So definitely listen to the interview that we did or other ones that Defi has done. But the short version is they are minting at two o'clock uh, Pacific, five o'clock Eastern today. So by tomorrow, they'll be minted. Um, you have to get an allow list, 0 0.2 ETH each. And uh, we ran the math. Like each of these can take a snapshot once. A, uh, well, it, it's exponential. So the camera can click once and then it has to wait a day. And then the next time it has to wait two days and the next time four days, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the short answer is there'll only be about 400 of these in two years. So still very limited for a death bee. Very, very cool. Next up, we have Harvey Rayner, our good friend, teasing his one of his next collections called Quasi Dragon Studies. And these come together. What do you think about this, Jared? I love this. I think the I, I DM'd Harvey and just said, dude, the art's amazing. I think that this is some of his best art yet, uh, even on the individual piece. I look forward to the dynamic about how these combine and at what rate. Uh, becoming public. I think you and I are both privy to to more than is public right now, but I really, really am excited about this. I love the partnership with Verse. I just think that overall, this is a really, really fun and potentially dynamic project. And I believe that, you know, what you show on screen about how they come together, you know, collecting uh, sets, we'll just say, uh, could be incentivized. So I, I really look forward to being on the sidelines and looking at this dynamic Absolutely. And I love Harvey. I got to shout him out. You guys got to check out his uh, his website sometime, pattern.co. He teases a lot of stuff here and uh, he has generators for his work on there. So for example, here's Monte Carlo. You go to his website, you can just play around with outputs. I just think it's so cool that he does this and this quasi dragon studies, which we just mentioned, you can do the same for all right, Jared, I know you got to get out of here soon, so I'll go fast. Artist to highlight, Eric DeJuli, I hope I pronounced that right, EDG, fantastic artist. He's been in Artblocks Curated. He has other Artblocks drops. He's been on Proof. He has some really, really cool art, and he engages the community. Definitely worth checking him out, and uh, you, you will not be disappointed. This guy's a master at both still art and uh, dynamic art. Yeah, I think... You know, the theme here is some of this diamond exhibition stuff from Proof and the Moonbird, whatever it was. But, you know, Melissa had Deja Vu. EDG's uh, release Cathedral Studies is amazing. I just think for a Melissa W project, you know, the, being able to get an entry point, is something I would look at, but you're, you're looking at under a quarter ETH for an entry point. Some of these are really, really amazing outputs. I am not... I personally own one. It's what I minted as part of my Moonbird exhibit. But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, there's a really good opportunity in a Melissa W piece. Uh, I think as the collection grows, you know, you might see some interesting price action, but I think there's a, it's set to be a 600 piece set. So it's only about half minted out at this point. Amazing. And we're big fans of Melissa as well. So we wanted to highlight her in addition to Deja Vu. And let's go to some art to watch. Really quickly again, uh, Callion by EDG. You, you all have to literally watch this because it's just super cool. This art has motion. It's beautiful the way it it moves. It kind of reminds me a little bit of pixel sorting, the Kim Asendorf art that we talked about. Uh, we have talked about many times. And this is an art box curated of only 256 items, floor 0.5, uh, relatively thin. You know, we have 11% uh, listed. And, and I think that will continue to go down as time goes on. And the last art to watch, sorry for speed running this, folks, Anti-Cyclone 
Why am I bringing this up? There are 4% listed. Jared mentioned that many of them ran. The other thing is the floor price is now 7.68. It's now, I think, either the fifth or sixth highest floor price for an R blocks curated. And it is, uh, I mean, obviously I love it. I haven't been shy about this. Literally our first episode for Collector's Corner was anti-cyclone, um, but 4% listed is thin. I mean, that's where, you know, Squiggles is like 1%, Fidenza is I think three or 4%, Ringers two or 3%. It's really getting up there. And now the floor price has outpaced Memories of Chilin, Fontana, Meridian, pretty much all these other collections that it was behind. And uh, you may not notice it, but anti-cyclones are sort of positioning as uh, being really a leader and, and maybe to take that next leap into the gazers, ringers category. Uh, you know, full disclosure, I obviously hold a bunch of these, so I, I obviously hope so. But this is data here, not my opinion. We're looking at data. Any I fully agree Jared? with that sentiment. I mean, you're looking at like nine sales before it pops into the double digit ETH. The floor is extremely thin, but for the beyond the price appreciation, if you're just an observer of this project, I mean, I'm staring at the screen and I see two pieces within the bottom three of the floor. I mean, you have a guide 10 that's, you know, mm -hmm. arguably very well filled out. Full disclosure, I used to own that one at one point. Uh, the last sale of 8.4 was me. But the, you know, I think that as far as ETH terms go, this is this project's been incredibly resilient despite the market. And this is one that, again, thin floor, thin supply. I could see this thing just rocketing when the the bowl comes back, right? And then even the one second from the floor, like that, that oh, yeah. just looks that, beautiful to me, almost it, fully filled. It's just gorgeous, the movement. I mean, so those who are in the market, you know, keep looking at the floor, man. They, there's two great pieces at and, little to no premium. And Jared, even opinion. this one here, right? I mean, it's not like one of the most filled out, but it's it's beautiful in the way that it, it is comes together. I mean, this one here, 130. I mean, so many of these are great. Here we have a fully filled guide three, relatively There's rare. a guide one at 16, right? They I just mean, dropped that. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That know, probably won't last that long. at 12.5. I mean, these are historically low premiums relative to the floor. I mean, less than 50% premium to the floor for a, a night. 2x on a guide one. I mean, these are uh, amazing, amazing opportunities in my opinion. But, you know, again, and then look at the disparity. I mean, obviously stuff will come in, but like once you break through that 14 to 15 ETH, I mean, oh, it's I mean, just- There's nothing left for sale. I mean, this this right here is a grail here, number 697. It's it's listed at grail prices, but there are only 10 guide one nights. And those are, you know, just really, really fantastic pieces. Uh, so and, and over here, another grail, I mean, obviously 114 ether is like probably way too high for that at the moment, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's really holding up. So congrats to Mapon. And I mean, it just passes the eye test. I don't know. I, I, we should stop gushing about it. I guess we're both, uh, big fans and holders, but yeah, I don't know. I just love this art. It's this, this is what got me sucked into it all. So I'm happy to see it doing well. You know, and I think the thing that's more intriguing to me is when you go to like the owners tab, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, Flamingo has 42 of them. 6529 has 18. I know th these have been quietly been sucked up. Uh, the 6 y 29 Museum, 10. Curated, 10. Studio 137, 9. Like, I mean, these are really, really amazing collectors and chances are that very, very little of them will we'll see the market even when they turn. Um, so uh, just, just something for consideration. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, Bob Lucas has six, Blackbird has six, the funny guys, six, D seed phrase six. I mean, Oh, look at there. Aston vault at six. Who's that? <laughs> you know, so yeah. DC at six, you know, he just swept some a little while ago, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's very well regarded as a, a top tier at my, from my opinion, at this point, the, the market has spoken and it's quietly gotten consumed. We're just the ones talking about it. Absolutely. Well, that is our episode friends. Thank you for listening. And uh, we, we hope you enjoyed it. Hang in there for the artists and the collectors. Things will get better. I promise you, we just got to survive the bear and we'll be here with you for it until next time. We'll see you then.
Thank you for tuning into Collector's Corner. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you like this episode and want to help us out, please subscribe and leave us a review on your podcasting platform of choice like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and follow us on YouTube. Please also follow us on Twitter for announcements as we expand to other social and content platforms. Our Twitter handle is at collectors underscore XYZ. We'd also love to hear any feedback you have. So please comment or reach out. We're always striving to be more useful and get better so we can help you in your collecting journey. The Collector's Corner team and their guests are not registered investment advisors. All views expressed on this podcast are personal opinions and are not specific inducements to make particular investments or investment strategies and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. This show is solely for informational and entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, please consult a professional.